Hello, and welcome to Storytime with Miss J. If you're having an awesome Friday, shout really loud so I can hear it, okay? Go. Ah, oh, I'm so happy all of you are having a fantastic Friday. I'm Miss J, but I want to know your name. So please say your name really loud so we can hear you, okay? Go. Okay, so we have Mark and Teresa and Jenny and Jeannie and Mike and Paradise and Diamond and Amani and Dominique and Maria and John and Casey and more. And I'm so glad all of you could join us today. Let's all say hi to Shimmer. Hi, Shimmer. Hi, Miss J. Oh, I have a question for our friends at home already. You do? Ask away. How do you spell your name? That's an amazing question, Shimmer. Friends at home, how do you spell your name? So first, I'll have Shimmer spell her name, and then I'll spell my name, okay? Shimmer is spelled S-H-I-M-M-E-R. Shimmer. That's right. Good job. And Miss J is spelled M-S period J. So Miss J. Now, friends at home, turn to the person that's next to you and spell out your name and then have them spell out their name. Wow. Great spelling, guys. Well, now that we're speaking about spelling, let's get started on the book today. Today, we'll be reading The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Yun He looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little box of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yun He's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yun He had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yun He, surprising her. Yun He looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yunhei answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yunhei, said Yunhei. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, une, some kids chanted. No, no, Yunhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced yun Hei. Oh, it's yu Hei, the boy said. Like yu Hei. What about Hey you? Just then, the bus pulled up to school and the doors opened. yun Hei hurried to get off. yu Hei, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. yun Hei felt herself blush. Yun Hei stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Are you going in? asked a curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Yun Hei nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl! He announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yunhei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yunhei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? someone shouted. Yunhei pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. 
Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but yoon Hae kept thinking about her name. How was school, yoon Hae? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? yoon Hae simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied yoon Hae. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? yoon Hae is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, yoon Hae complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, yoon Hae, her mother said. That's a good thing. yoon Hae just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, yoon Hae and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fidel's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, yoon Hae's favorite, for soup. It made yoon Hae smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at yoon Hae. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. yoon Hae nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what's your name? yoon Hae, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? yoon Hae nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said, as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, yoon Hae. That evening, yoon Hae stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully, then wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Susie, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when yoon Hae arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. yoon Hae took one out and read it aloud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want said Cindy, who sat next to her. yoon Hae took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. yoon Hae nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over yoon Hae's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like, or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. yoon Hae looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. yoon Hae turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? yoon Hae thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandmother gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? 
She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yunhei said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Yunhei read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yunhei got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yunhei, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhei, your grandma forever. Yunhei took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhei walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhei. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhei replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhee? he asked her with his eyes open wide. Yunhei quickly looked at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhei. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yoon Hei, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yoon Hei smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yoon Hei, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yoon Hei came to class early to look at the names one last time but the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yunhei slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhei said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokotos's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in, and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhei, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhei nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhei wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and the funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I like my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhei means grace. Grace! Grace Inhai! shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yinhai? Unhi? Unhai? Yunhei said her name again, slowly and clearly. Soon, the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Yunhei's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhei. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhei heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yunhei. See you tomorrow.
Goodbye, Yunhei. Yunhei said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhei, Yunhei, come downstairs, mother called up to Yunhei. Your friend is here. Yunhei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Yunhei breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did! He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yunhei. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yunhei. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. Next week, we'll be reading A Peacock Among Pigeons, written by Tyler Curry, illustrated by Clarion Gutierrez. Well, that's the end of the episode. I really hope you join us next time for more awesome, fun books. Until next time, bye!